SpaceX is now just days away from its second attempt to launch the world's most powerful rocket into orbit. This is considered the result of more than six months of continuous efforts by the SpaceX team. Looking back on that journey, we all agree that the main reason why the Mars rocket took so long to fly again was not a technical problem. It's actually caused by ridiculous bureaucratic requirements. One of these things is so absurd that it became a comedy sketch with a flashlight at the bottom. That comedy sketch features a seal with headphones, yes, tied to a board. I bet you can't help but laugh while watching it. Now, while we wait for the launch of Starship, why don't we order a cup of popcorn, sit down, and listen to SpaceX's CEO expose the ridiculous things the company must comply with to get the green light to launch Starship, right? All this and more in today's episode of TechMap. In an insightful conversation on the Lex Fridman podcast, Elon Musk, the visionary CEO of SpaceX, recently offered a unique anecdote about the challenges his team faced in the Starship launch effort. Musk's revelation had nothing to do with the typical aerospace engineering hurdler. Instead, he highlighted the complex and often surprising interactions between rocket science and environmental bureaucracy. The obstacles SpaceX faces extend beyond the practical details of building the massive Starship, which has earned the title of the most powerful rocket to date. An intriguing plot twist in the space adventure is regulators' concerns about the environmental impact of space exploration, such as the effects of sonic booms on wildlife. A sonic boom due to a large supersonic aircraft is a sound associated with shockwaves created when an aircraft travels through the air faster than the speed of sound at Mach 1. Starship vehicle tends to begin supersonic flight twice, about a minute after takeoff, during the Max-Q period, and immediately before the beginning of the landing burn. In a situation you can hardly imagine in the 21st century, while the topic of whether animal experimentation should be banned or not is still controversial, a government environmental organization might come up with the idea that, in my opinion, seems to go against their mission of animal protection. Well, what I want to mention here is that SpaceX was forced to kidnap a seal, tie it to a wooden board, and then place a sonic boom headset on it. The reason for this strange request is due to concerns about the impact of the sonic boom from the Starship launch on the breeding process of seals near the Vandenberg launch site. Elon even tells the story in a humorous tone. This is an actual thing that happened. This is actually real. <laughs> <laughs> I would love, love to see this. Yeah. To be honest, it is not easy to understand what the real purpose of this experiment is. When you look at the photo, you can see how calm the seal is. And what will be the next step? Nothing. As Elon humorously explained when the seal goes back to other, you know, seal's friends, how's he going to explain that? They're never going to believe him. Never going to believe him. That environmental organization should have requested SpaceX to take that seal to do another experiment. For example, capturing that seal's mate and waiting until their breeding season. Finally, let the both of them mate and collect data to see the quality of mating. Well, I just did a little Googling, and it turns out seal mating season typically falls in late spring to fall, when the females enter estrus usually about six weeks after their baby is born. I mean, in addition to preparing for IFTO2, Elon Musk's business is also a biologist specializing in seal research and must wait until next spring to receive a launch license for Starship. Others have come up with more interesting ideas, as the seal might not have been affected by the sonic boom, but by the trap instead. Imagine the poor animal probably got post-traumatic stress disorder from that whole situation, and after being released to nature, it will be seriously obsessed with anything recalling that trap instead of the rocket or sonic boom. It is funny and ridiculous, right? More absurdly, regulatory investigations like these are examples of how Starship's launch could be delayed, Musk said. Another example is that government agency which was concerned with the likelihood of Starship hitting a whale in international waters. Yeah, it sounds like reasonable.
because, as you know, in the upcoming test flight, Elon sets a goal of Starship's 90-minute trip worldwide ending with re-entry and splashdown of the Starship's upper stage in the Pacific Ocean northwest of Hawaii. But wait, as far as I know, in spaceflight, any rocket, whether reusable or not, chooses the ocean to fall into in case it crashes. SpaceX's Starship also follows that usual rule and why is it only it that has become the target of environmental activists in this case. If you have any ideas, could you please comment below to broaden my mind? As for Elon Musk, he made a different argument. He said, uh, How often do you see sharks? Not that often, you know. As a percentage of ocean surface area, sharks basically are zero. He means if SpaceX's rocket does hit a whale, which is extremely unlikely beyond all belief, that is the fate had it in, that's a well has some seriously bad luck. Honestly, while the normal depth for most whales is around 100 meters, 328 feet, some species are capable of diving much deeper. For example, the Cuvier's beaked whale has been known to dive to depths of up to 2,992 meters, 9,116 feet. For that reason, the spacecraft could only hit the whale while it was jumping out of the water. Starship will fly nearly a few feet above the calm ocean surface when suddenly a whale jumps out of the water and is hit. Of course, the probability of this happens is very low because whales don't have to come up for air often. Of course, the above arguments are only based on Elon Musk's personal views. So the question here is, does supersonic flight really impact marine wildlife? NASA describes a sonic boom as a thunder-like noise a person on the ground hears when an aircraft flies overhead faster than the speed of sound. Sonic boom results from the coalescence at the ground of strong impulsive shock waves generated by aircraft flying at supersonic speed. The noise generated on the ground may damage structures and disturb people. Additionally, it can hurt marine and wildlife since many species of marine life use sound to communicate, mate, find food, fend off predators, navigate, and maintain group cohesion. However, the magnitude of the sonic boom begins to decay as soon as it hits the water's surface and after 30, 50 meters underwater, it fades into ambient noise. The impact of the sonic boom activity on these creatures relies on where they live in the water column and the magnitude of their vocalizations. Thus, animals living deeper underwater are therefore less likely to be harmed supersonic flight will not have a significant detrimental effect on marine wildlife. Most endangered marine species live in coral reefs near shores. More importantly, since the beginning of the new era of supersonic commercial flights, the reduction of sonic boom levels has become the main concern for this industry. Since 1970, an FAA regulation has banned supersonic flights overland for unacceptable sonic booms at the ground. Thus, most supersonic jets later won't reach speeds greater than Mach 1 until roughly 200 miles offshore. Many research studies have been carried out from that date to understand sonic boom generation, propagation, and effects both on the environment and communities. Minimization techniques have also been developed in an attempt to reduce sonic boom annoyance to acceptable levels. In the last 20 years, the advances in both knowledge and technologies and companies and institutions, significant investments have again raised interest in the development of new methods and tools for the design of low-boom supersonic aircraft. The exploration of unconventional configurations and exotic solutions and systems seems to be needed to effectively reduce a sonic boom and allow supersonic flight everywhere. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.